In this video, we will share no less than 12 concrete tips with you to talk about the body, body development, boundaries and transgressive sexual behavior with children and youth. Tip 1. Start talking about it as early as possible. This is a general tip when it comes to talking about sex and sexuality. From the moment children are born, they are curious about their bodies and how their body and the bodies of others develop. Use that curiosity to your advantage. The sooner you start talking about it, the more norm normal it will feel, which is crucial if you want children and youth to openly talk about it. In order for them to be able to talk about it, they also need the correct vocabulary. And that's our second tip. Give them that vocabulary. It's important for children to learn the correct name for all their body parts, including their genitals. Often, nicknames are used for the vulva, the penis, the testicles. This makes us feel more comfortable, but it doesn't help children at all. Why is it so important for them to know the correct names of their genitals as well? First of all, it helps normalize these body parts. Secondly, it enables them to better explain what is wrong if they have a problem or are in pain. And most importantly, should someone touch them inappropriately, then knowing the names of all their body parts enables children to talk about it. Tip three, reflect diversity. We are all unique, so are all our body parts. Make sure to reflect this uniqueness and diversity in the materials you use. Use pictures of people with different body types. I'm mean, talking about specific body parts, about the genitals, for example. Include various pictures of penises and vulvas as well. This way, children learn that all bodies are different and that that's perfectly okay, which contributes to a positive self-image. Tip four, use recognizable situations. Use experiences that children and youth are familiar with and can relate to. This way, you invite them to share their own experiences as well, and you can better respond to the questions they might have. For example, talk about unwanted hugs with toddlers, about sexual banter or teasing with teens, and about intimate pictures with adolescents. Tip five, discuss stereotypes. Since stereotypes are views that undermine resilience, it's important to actively talk about them. Discuss stereotypical views about gender roles, beauty ideals, victim blaming, sexual aggression and assertiveness. Tip six, talk about experiences. Resilience starts with being able to say no to unwanted sexual situations. But to be able to do that, children need to learn how to talk about negative experiences. When is a sexual situation unwanted? What do you feel? How can you show people what you're feeling? How do you talk about it? Talking about experiences is the best prevention because it gives children the language they need and teaches them to take their experiences and emotions seriously. Has a child experienced transgressive behavior? Stress that it is not his fault and that it's important to talk about it. Let him know who he can turn to with his questions and problems and also take into account that it might be more difficult for a victim of sexually transgressive behavior to learn about boundaries, to set boundaries, and to recognize the boundaries of others. Tip seven, respond to current events. Does the news cover an incident of sexual abuse? Then use that as a conversation starter. Another way to discuss boundaries is by making use of informal moments, which is our eighth tip. Children learn a lot from these informal moments. How do you react when you see an incidence of sexual transgressive behavior, for example? How you, as an adult, set your boundaries and communicate about them is important too. Whether or not you stand up for yourself, which comments and feedback you give during informal moments with children and youth all matter. So be aware of that. Tip nine, talk about what they can do. When discussing boundaries and sexual transgressive behavior, it's important to not only talk about what children cannot do, they need to know what they can do as well. How can you ask someone for a kiss or a hug? What makes sex fun? Tip 10, raise awareness about group pressure. Make sure children and youth are aware of group pressure. Were they ever asked to join in? And how can you respond if you don't want to join in? Tip 11, meet their needs. Adapt the topics you discuss to the children and young people you are working with. Make sure the content is age and developmentally appropriate and that you start from the needs and interests of your group. And tip 12, inform yourself. 
Make sure you know which sexual behaviors are normal at what age, so you know when to respond. Learn how to respond appropriately with a flex system created by Sensoa, which we discuss in detail in this program. Informing yourself also means knowing which organizations and tools exist on different topics. Whenever you're talking about the body and boundaries, or any other topic related to sex and sexuality for that matter, discuss where children can find accurate information on a topic and who they can turn to with problems and questions. Make sure to check out our comprehensive sexuality education resource database right here on Street Smart Learn for inspiration. Don't just inform children about these resources, but encourage them to actively think about which strategies or resources they would use in different situations as well. Let them act out how they would react to sexually transgressive behavior, for example, or let them discuss what they would do if they cross someone else's boundaries themselves. Good luck putting these soft tips in practice and stay tuned for more useful hands-on methodologies and tools.